Last night I had a clear night. It allowed me to do some more testing on the upcoming new version of SkyTrack, version 170. What I was testing last night was uh, some more work I've done on this uh, JPL major body tracking. So a couple weeks ago, I, um, with the news of Artemis about to launch, I quickly added this feature and, and went through some quick debugging. And now that Artemis has been uh, postponed, I had a little more time to, to look at it and refine it further. Uh, so I did a video a couple weeks ago, but it's um, it's sort of outdated now with some of the changes I made. So this video is going to take a, a bit more of an in-depth uh, look at uh, at the tracking and, and then some of the changes that I've made uh, since the last video. Uh, so again, um, this is using data from the uh, JPL Horizons uh, website. Uh, from the JPL lab from Caltech and what it allows you to do it allows you to, to search uh, many different targets and it'll uh, produce uh, ephemeris um, data for you and so you can you can go in and do this manually it also has a uh, an API and that's what SkyTrack uses uh, to make it a little easier to use within SkyTrack so going back to uh, SkyTrack here, if we, um, let me, I'll just uh, delete this one and we'll, we'll download it again. Um, so first of all, you have to download when you first uh, use this feature in SkyTrack, you have to download this list of objects uh, from JPL just by clicking that. And that, uh, that goes pretty quick. So we currently have 485 objects. So these are the, the major bodies. Uh, JPL also does comet and asteroids, but we have another source right now for comet and asteroids. So this is, this is all the other, um, what they call major bodies. And every once in a while, you'll have to click this to download the update list. So since I've had this feature, I've seen this number vary from 483 to 485 or so so things get added things get dropped off um, it's gonna download so we can do a, a name search here and it's going to download from whatever start date you specify and it'll download three days of data um, because those those orbits and locations will change uh, the same as with satellite TLE files you have to download updated files every once in a while so after three days this file is going to expire and uh, you won't be able to use it and then you can just download a new one so I'm just going to download that one and it's done so what it's doing is it's it's downloading these files and uh, we'll just take a look at one of those files and this is actually for the James Webb Telescope. So it's got all sorts of information. Um, in fact, up, up here further, it has uh, information about planned burns when they change the location of the telescope. So that's kind of interesting to look at. But what I want to look at is the data that SkyTrack uses. So we've specified the range of dates, and then you also can specify the step size. Of, um, of your data points and the minimum SkyTrack does that automatically and the minimum uh, step point you can choose is um, one minute. Uh, SkyTrack updates the rates once every second so we're using uh, interpolation in between these data points to uh, get an estimated point. So here we have the, the apparent RA and declination and then we have uh, the rate the rates. So this is the rate of change of uh, the declination and the unit values for that are arc seconds per hour. Same with RA. The only thing different with RA, they multiply the value times the cosine of the declination. And that is just to give a more linear rate within the plane of the sky. But with our mounts, we don't, we don't want that. So I actually reverse that by dividing the cosine of the declination on the IRA rate. But anyway, that's what that's what SkyTrack uh, uses. So at 
every second. It'll search this file, look for which two data points our um, current time is in between, and then uh, estimate the value using uh, interpolation. Um, so that's sort of the, the background of how it, how it works. Uh, we're going to connect to the ASCOM simulator. And then we're going to click on the other tab and look at the capabilities. So this will vary between every mount and every ASCOM driver, what uh, features it has. And the one for JPL tracking that we need is this ability to set our RA rate and ability to set our declination rate. So setting this R, RA rate, that is um, uh, an offset of, of uh, sidereal tracking. So if your mount uh, says no here, you won't be able to track. You'll still be able to do a, a go to slew to these objects but it just won't use the uh, custom tracking rates to, to keep it uh, in the same location in your view. Uh, so I don't know how many of these are currently up. Well, we'll, we'll do Mars here. Um, so if your mount is capable, this, this will be enabled. If it isn't, this will be uh, disabled. Let's use custom tracking rates. This shows our, our separation in arc seconds between our object and our mount. So we're not close to it right now. And then these two lines show the delta and the RA. So the difference between where the object is and where the mount's pointing and the delta and the declination. Before um, this version, SkyTrack was always using closed loop tracking. So in other words, it looked at the difference between where the mount's pointing and where the object is and um, calculated a rate to catch up and to, to try to close that delta. And then also was using the rate of the movement of the object from that uh, JPL data file. Um, this works works well if, if your mount is able to give real-time RA coordinates. Some mounts don't. Some mounts will queue that information and they only update it maybe once per second. So if that's the case, if your mount is using uh, queued position coordinates, then this tracking isn't going to be as smooth as it uh, could be. So what I've done in this release is um, once you um, are pointing um, well, at the object. So in this case, I said, if your separation is less than 0 0.02 arc seconds, that's, that's pretty tight. You normally wouldn't use that. I'm just using that for demonstration here. Um, so anyway, once, once the mount catches up to the object and has it well centered, then it'll switch from closed loop tracking to open loop tracking. So we're not trying to close the delta anymore between your current position and where the object is but we're only applying the JPL rates. Um, so you'll have to experiment with your mount, which produces better tracking, having this clicked or not having this clicked, whether you want to use open loop or closed loop. Um, one way you might be able to tell, you'll remember during the calibration um, for satellite tracking, the mount calibration, there's a step five, which is uh, checking to see if the mount is giving real time coordinates. So if your mount passes step five, you might be better to, to leave this unchecked and use closed loop. But if your mount fails uh, step five, then definitely um, you want to check this and you want to go into open loop tracking. Um, hopefully I explained that well. So we'll see, we'll see how this works. So I'm going to start uh, saluting to the moon. Oh, sorry, to Mars. And we can see this closing. It's close now. So now it started um, closed loop tracking. So it's still trying to close this, this delta. Oh, down here, this delta. So we'll see these, these numbers gradually goes down. It doesn't, it doesn't, it updates the rate once every second, but it doesn't try to close that 
delta within one uh, loop. So it's just kind of gently uh, closing that. And what we're going to see is once this mount separation drops below 0 0.2, it's going to switch from closed loop to open loop tracking. So again, you'd, you want to do that if your mount um, doesn't give you real time location on your RE and DAC. Otherwise, your, your tracking is going to oscillate back and forth depending on that timing. And we're just coming up. There we go. So we got under 0 0.2. And again, you you want to have a bigger value here normally. And you can see in status now we're using open loop tracking. So it's no longer looking at the difference between the mount location and the object location and trying to close that gap. It's just applying the um, the rates, the RE and the deck rates from the GPL file. So you, you can experiment with that and see what works better for your mount. This uh, checkbox here use arc second per second for RE rate. So the ASCOM standards say that you're supposed to use RE second instead of arc second. And the difference between that, RE can be measured um, in terms of time. So RE second is, uh, is a time measurement uh, for the rate where arc second is a angle measurement. And so the standard says uh, RE second, but I've found that some ASCOM drivers incorrectly use arc second uh, per second. Um, for instance, I've, uh, I've used for testing the EQ mod uh, simulator, and it is using arc seconds. And so I assume the uh, regular version of EQ mod is incorrectly using arc seconds too. So you'll, you'll know this if, um, if your Delta RA just isn't closing. In fact, if it's getting bigger, you can try checking that to see if, uh, if they're using the wrong units. Um, the ASCOM simulator originally was. I'm using a pre-release of the next version. Um, I contacted them saying that uh, the simulator was incorrectly using that. So they've corrected that and that'll be out in the next version. So I don't have this checked right now because I'm using that pre-release that's using the correct units for RA rate. Um, so anyway, you can ex experiment and see whether you can track better with, uh, with open loop or closed loop uh, tracking on that. So I'll show you now some of the some of the images I took last night. Um, so this is one of my favorite targets. This is the uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory. Uh, I think it's I think it's NASA's uh, X-ray Space Telescope. And so all these streaks obviously are stars. And uh, there it was, right dead center. Uh, nice little round dot. So that, that worked really well. And then, believe it or not, this is the James Webb Telescope. So the James Webb Telescope is, I think, 1.6 million kilometers away. And the telescope is 20 by 60 meters. So I was really surprised that we were able to pick it up. How do I know um, this is it? Because um, I'm using those exact tracking rates. All the stars are blurred and then right dead center. I did a, a sync uh, before I started and right dead center. Um, there it was, a nice little round dot. Um, now I should, I should explain, this is an eight minute um, exposure and I'm using a, an astrophysics mount that has um, absolute encoders. And so I can do unguided um, tracking. And so you might not be able to get this kind of result with, uh, with every mount. And just to demonstrate that. So this is, 
This is with tracking on. By the way, this is this is using uh, the Nina uh, aberration viewer. I just find it easier because I can I can get a one to one quick view and um, and I can see right dead center where I'm expecting my object. But here I just use sidereal tracking. So so again, this is this is with my mount with absolute encoders. I can do um, unguided exposure. So this is a, an eight minute unguided exposure, and I still have reasonably round stars but there, there we can see James Webb telescope so obviously it's tracking differently than sidereal and so it's a blur or streak and if I compare the two side by side so in this one we're using the JPL tracking and you can see the the streak of the stars is about the same length of the streak of uh, James Webb when we're just using sidereal tracking um, so again, I was I was pretty surprised that we could pick it up. Uh, of course, the the dot here isn't really an indication of its size; it's more of an indication of its brightness, um, because uh, 20 by 60 meters, 1.6 million kilometers away, the the actual angular size of that. Uh, I think I calculated it out, and it was about. Um, uh, three one thousandths of an arc second and my pixel scale here is 1.2 arc seconds per pixel so so obviously I'm not you know resolving its shape or anything like that this is just light reflecting from it that's being dispersed through the atmosphere same as same as our star sizes here are more of an indication of the brightness of the star not actual star size they're they're too far away um, but I thought, I thought that was uh, pretty cool that we could actually pick up the James Webb telescope and this is just with a 92 millimeter uh, refract refractor at f7 but uh, a fairly long exposure um, so I've I've imaged it before and some nights I can't see it and other nights it's like uh, last night this this was about the brightest I've seen it so it probably depends on its orientation uh, towards the earth and how, how reflective it is um, but anyway I, I thought that was pretty neat so I think uh, I think this is working fairly well now um, on my previous video you saw uh, I developed a new legacy interface for sky watcher mounts and we still have some testing to do on that and once once I'm confident that that's working reasonably well, then we'll release uh, 1.70. Uh, but f for sure, I'll get it out before the Artemis launch. But uh, I think this is this is working out fairly well now. I think I've got most of the bugs worked out. And um, again, if your mount doesn't have those real-time RA declination um, coordinates, then closed loop tracking doesn't work as well. But now you have an old option to use open loop tracking. And um, I found with my mount that it was pretty close between closed and open loop. I just got slightly better um, results with uh, closed loop. Uh, so that's it. Uh, Hopefully I, I explained that well. If, if not, please ask uh, questions in the comments. Thanks for now.